Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got some really interesting things to go over about the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. Riddler Q has returned with another tweet about the Generation 9 games DLC. We also have a really cool theory to go over about how Clavel could potentially be the antagonist for the Generation 9 DLC. There's some really cool things to go over. So if you're excited for the video, as always, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes. It really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we cover in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new for daily Pokemon content. Ring the notification bell. With all of that out of the way, though, let's get into the video, and I really hope that you enjoy. So, starting things off, this was tweeted out by Riddler Koo on the 12th of January, um, so quite a few days ago now, um, but the re most recent tweet is obviously what I'm going to go over next. Either way, Riddler Koo posting saying, want to know brand new and juicy DLC information? Like this tweet, going to leak uh, when it reaches 100,000 likes. So, of course, we didn't hit that. I mean, I didn't even like it, but I mean, I don't think it really made a difference. We're like 90k off. Um, so, yeah, there's some really good juicy info for the DLC that unfortunately he's not going to reply or not going to tweet out uh, because obviously it didn't hit 100k. But hopefully we get that before Pokemon Day. Like, we're pretty sure the Pokemon Day announcement on the 27th of February is going to include the Scarlet and Violet DLC. Now, whether this juicy information will be in that reveal or not, I have no idea. But um, it is really cool to see that we have got something juicy in the pipeline uh, for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC. Anyway, this was the most recent tweet by Riddler Koo, um, which was on the 21st of January. And he started off saying, you know, Happy Chinese New Year. And then he went on to say, the DLC is so cool. Looking forward to your reactions when it gets revealed. Um, so this is really, really exciting because I, I thought for some reason, like someone ages ago said that Riddler Koo said that like the DLC wasn't very good, but I think they got confused with like the post game. Like the post game was okay, but it wasn't really as good as like other post games that we've had in previous Pokemon games. However, though, the DLC is looking like it's going to be really cool. Um, so I don't know what that really means. It just means that I would probably get excited. Of course, this is one person's opinion. We haven't really had like Kaka come back and like leak more stuff. It is literally just Riddler Koo saying this. Uh, but you know, he's saying, you know, it's really, really cool. There's some new juicy info and he's looking forward to everyone's reactions when it gets revealed. So I'm expecting a really, really cool reveal um, for this DLC when uh, it drops on Pokemon Day, which again, 27th of Feb, it's on a Monday this year. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much guaranteed to get the DLC on that day because we're also getting the Scarlet and Violet update at late Feb as well, which again is going to be around Pokemon Day, if not on Pokemon Day, uh, which is also going to add extra like functionality, whatever. So yeah, I'm guessing that all ties in with the DLC. But yeah, really uh, really interesting tweet here from Riddler Koo. And uh, yeah, really excited to see what this is going to be. But um, who knows? Maybe everything gets revealed because like in Sword and Shield's Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra reveal trailer, we got all the legendaries revealed. We got um characters revealed we've got loads of new stuff revealed so potentially they'll drop another trailer like that and just reveal everything at once but uh, yeah pokemon day is shaping up to be a really really cool event this year and we'll have to see what happens with the dlc but either way that is all the riddler coup stuff that i wanted to go over again it's nothing like crazy but it's just more positive vibes about the dlc some people are still thinking we're not going to get dlc um because it's not officially been confirmed riddler coup has literally been leaking everything about generation 9 since they were announced this is on its way I know that it's not been confirmed by Pokemon, but it, it you know, it's, it's literally on its way. I mean, it's literally in the coding and everything like that. Anyway, I'm just talking nonsense. Let's move on to uh, this really cool theory here by Light talking about how Clavel could be the true villain of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Also quite interesting to note that the true villain of Scarlet and Violet is technically behind a paywall as well. I only just thought about this the other day. Like, not only are we getting, like, version exclusive legendaries like Paradox Weekend and Paradox Verizion that are going to be behind a paywall, but so is, like, the, the final battle, I guess, um, for Scarlet and Violet. So obviously, you're going to have to buy the DLC to take on the antagonist, which, again, could be Clavel, it could be Heath, it could be Nimona again. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, this is a really cool theory put together by Light talking about how Clavel could potentially be the, the true evil villain. So anyway, theory time. Today, I bring you a theory about Clavel, probably the true villain of Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. All the connections I will make are speculations and probably will not happen in this way, but always uh, enjoy this type of theory. So again, take it with a grain of salt. It is just a theory as stated here. But um, I don't know, like when I originally saw Clavel, I always thought there was something evil about him. And I think a lot of people got that vibe as well. He does obviously have the six Premier Balls, so we were expecting to go on and battle him, which we of course did. But I was expecting it to be more in like an evil way or something. But anyway, let's move on with this theory. Uh, so he goes on and says, From the beginning, Clavel seems like a model director with a strong sense of loyalty. Well-spoken and motivating par excellence for us to find our treasure. But what if there is something dark behind that speech? 
During the Starfall Street storyline, he disguises himself as a student named Clive to support the player and learn the truth behind Team Star's reputation and actions. We can think of a possible double personality. Also, the name Clive is a corruption of the name itself. So, um, didn't actually know that, but uh, yeah, Clive from uh, Clove and a corruption of Clavel, which is interesting. And then, yeah, of course, this is Clive in the game. You know, spoilers if you haven't played it yet, I do apologize. Uh, I kind of remember we did not see the six Pokemon from his Premier Balls. We just saw six normal Pokemon inside normal Pokeballs when other trainers have special balls to use, like Team Star Leaders or Professor Sarda and Turo. I didn't actually even realize this. Literally just spoke about the six Premier Balls. Um, but I didn't realize, like, when we actually battle him, he just uses random Pokeballs. So he's not actually using his six Premier Ball team. So that could actually be something that we we find out like later on. Whereas obviously if you go to the Team Star members and obviously the, the Sarda and Turo fight, they're actually using their Pokeballs. So I didn't even realize that. That's a really good shout from Light. So uh, yeah, wonder where his actual six Premier Balls are um, for that team. Then goes on to say the Pokemon company also has the preset that mostly all the directors slash presidents of their video games have a certain dark part. Same happened with Rose in Pokemon Sword and Shield and Lusamine in Sun and Moon. Also, they have the name of the flowers. Obviously, as we know, Rose turned out to be a pretty evil dude. So did Lusamine in, uh, in the Generation 7 games. Then he goes on to say, uh, Carnations can mean several things depending on the color. Red for friendship or love, purple for caprice, but yellow is considered betrayal or revenge. I'll come back to this point later, but what if I told you that Clavel could be a predecessor of Heath? So yeah, Heath could actually be Clavel's ancestor. He could be related to him. I originally thought that Nimona might potentially be related to him because Nimona could have also been like, or could also be the antagonist for the DLC. But it looks like even Clavel, I mean, they do kind of look a tiny bit similar as well, like Heath and Clavel, I guess, if you were really going to stretch that. Um, but that could be a way that, you know, maybe Clavel finds out Heath's plans and something and then he takes it on for himself or something and then obviously takes charge of the school and to try and, I guess, make it look like he's not evil or whatever. Uh, then goes on to say, let's remember that Heath was the member of the first expedition to the po uh, to the Paldea Crater 200 years ago. It is not unreasonable to think that he was Clavel's predecessor of two or three generations. Um, they also look quite alike. And again, I, you could say they look quite alike. I guess there is a sort of resemblance there. What if Clever wants to claim revenge for his ancestor's rejection that led to the creation of the Scarlet and Violet book, now forgotten on a shelf when it was his life's work? Then goes on to say there are rumors that Clavel was from Professor Turo slash Sarda's research team in the last 10 years uh, that they were creating this time machine. And if there was a conflict between them, how is it possible that Clavel didn't know about the teacher's accident? Then goes on to say, maybe Sarda and Turo created their AI to protect Clavel's time machine in case something happened to them, since he wanted to use it for his own benefit. Clavel causes an accident to get the teachers out of the way and be able to use the machine. Uh, what he doesn't know is that the AI is programmed to defend its use. Probably Clavel reprogrammed the AI um, from the beginning to lure us to Area Zero and thus be able to defeat the AI since it is very powerful and Clavel could not defeat it, but we could. Sometimes we could see uh, the AI uh, was failing. And then here is when uh, the revenge is symbolized, the, the yellow carnation, the missing book, the golden book that Heath wrote and Clavel has kept all this time. Probably this book releases the hatred that brought uh, Heath the rejection that people gave him after writing the other two books. Because obviously we know that there's a third book in the DLC according to like leaks and stuff. So again, maybe Heath has that book the whole time. Or maybe it's like Heath's secret. Uh, I mean, Clavel has that book the whole time. Maybe Heath's secret kind of book and you know, Clavel has it because he's related to it. And maybe it was passed down through generations. Now there is no Guardian in the Zero Lab and the pedestal is ready for the third book. The perfect moment to continue the story. Or maybe the true Guardian will snap up from a uh, lethargy uh, sleep. We will see. Hope you like the theory. As well as that, we also have like Clavel. We went over it in yesterday's video. Clavel goes to uh, Nimona's house and uh, obviously is waiting for Billy and O'Neill, which are again two other characters that are leaked to be coming to the DLC, which are again mainly... Uh, are related to Nimona as maybe her parents or something like that. So maybe they could also be evil and they're kind of like all in it together and maybe that's why he's so close with Nimona and stuff. Maybe Nimona has no idea about it and maybe that's why her parents are all like always away and stuff. Maybe because they're I don't know, it's, it's connected to this whole Area Zero master plan or something. I don't know. I still think that he does have something about him that is a bit evil. Again, I didn't realize um, in this battle here where he doesn't even use his six Premier Balls. So really interesting to see where they are. And I think that maybe there is more that meets the eye. Maybe we just battle him again and it's his final team. And maybe he's not evil. I don't know. But this is a really cool theory put together. There's a lot of kind of links here um, between like Heath and Clavel and uh, how it could all shape up for the Area Zero DLC. Because again, we're expecting Area Zero DLC, um, which is this. 
and then we're also expecting like another DLC as well. There might only be one DLC pack, there might be two. And again, because Riddler Q hasn't like said plurals or anything like that. He's just saying DLC is so cool. He's not saying the DLC is like plural or anything like that. He's been very smart with his choice of words. So we don't actually know if it's more than one. We're just expecting that just because that's what we got for the Isle of Arm and the Crown Tundra. But, you know, hopefully Riddler Q tweets out more as it gets closer to Pokemon Day. Because we know we're about a month away now. A month and what, four, three days, whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's not long to wait at all. And again, we've got Home coming out in spring, Mar uh, March, April and May for spring. So we'll have to wait and see um, if we get any kind of announcement about that anytime soon. But yeah, hopefully we get some sort of DLC uh, leaks on the build up to Pokemon Day. Uh, but if not, it's not like we have to wait too long anyway. Either way, though, that's going to be everything for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do consider hitting the like button down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes. It really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything that we covered in today's video. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Subscribe if you're brand new. Ring the notification bell. Uh, and until next time, guys, have a fantastic rest of your day. And peace.